All right. This episode is for my men out there. And for women, if you have a man that you care about anywhere in your life, your dad, brothers, husband, you know, uh, boyfriend, whatever, please listen to this episode. This is so important. Um, you know, with women, we hear about like hormone replacement therapy is kind of like a normal thing people talk about or having your hormones off. We don't talk about it with men that much. It's just like, Oh, you just take testosterone. If you want to get jacked and that's it. No, like there's so much more to it. So, um, today's guest is about as educated as you can get on the subject. Um, his name is Dr. Judson Brandeis. He's an award-winning urologist and sexual medicine expert. He's a clinical researcher, physician, educator, and a caring clinician and surgeon. He's a graduate of Brown university and Vanderbilt university school of medicine with urologic surgery residency at UCLA and a postdoc fellowship at Harvard. Okay. So and he has 25 years of experience as a board certified urologist. He is awesome. We get into everything with hormones, with guys, like how it really works with testosterone and anabolic steroids and what the difference is and what happens inside your body and all of those details. Um, we talk, we get into, uh, building muscle for men as they age and, you know, how that's all impacted on a hormonal level. It's just, it's so informative. Um, also, um, we talk about his book, the 21st century man. If you're not watching on YouTube and you're just listening, this thing is like textbook level. <laughs> it is so, but it's, it's textbook. What I mean by that is how big it is. It's huge, but it's definitely not like reading a textbook. It is, it's just like straight to the point. Here's all the information you need from all of these incredible, like world-class doctors that he's friends with from all of that education. You know, these are like the game changers in the industry. He put them all together for men's health. So really cool. We'll link that up. It's the 21st century man all written out dot com is the link for that. Um, you can also find Dr. Brandeis on Instagram. It's Judson Brandeis. So it's D E I S M D right? So that's E-E-I-S at the end, Brandeis MD, if you guys want to follow him on social. Um, and yeah, he gives so many resources, so much education. So we're going to go ahead and get in. Here is Dr. Judson Brandeis. Okay, everyone, before we dive in, I got to tell you about my new favorite partnership. And this is with F2 Meals. This is uh, through my friend, Drew Manning, Fit to Fat to Fit, if any of you know who that is. Um, Drew, let me know that he had started a new meal prep company. And this is something I get asked about all the time. It's to be honest with you, I've been a little hesitant to ever really recommend a meal prep company for two reasons. One, the food gets monotonous and it doesn't taste that good. And I just don't feel good about recommending it. And the other thing is food quality, right? So that is why I was so excited because Drew stuff, it's like, I know it's going to have you know, coconut oil or avocado oil or olive oil instead of crappy stuff. Right. And on top of it, when he sent me some to try, I was like, I mean, my reaction was like, holy crap. I mean, they are so good. That's the thing is they taste so good. These are keto meals, but even if you're not keto, I've been eating them like crazy, even though I'm not keto because it's doing all the hard stuff. It's all the vegetables and meats and all the things that I don't want to feel, you know, I don't feel like making. <laughs> so like, for example, I've got with me, if you're watching on YouTube, if not on audio, I've got like a barbecue chicken wrap here and a bacon scramble and a zoodles and meatballs and some coconut waffles. And even my kids have been scarfing these things. That's how good they are. So wanted to throw those your way with a discount. If you want to use code coach, Terry and get 10% off at F2 meals.com. And we've got a link in the show notes. Okay. We'll get on with the show. Okay. So guys, women, I hope you're listening to this too. And guys, this, but this one is like, it's really for you. And this is so needed. I was talk, talking to Dr. Brandeis before we started and just saying like, it's, it's like the, at least from my perspective for men with understanding hormones and they're getting all this like underground information from people who don't know what they're talking about. They're getting, you know, TRT illegally, or they're going to clinics and they're getting on, put on astronomical amounts of TRT and they're not even checking like vitamin D or zinc or anything like that. And they get on these, you know, almost, this is what I'm seeing. And we start seeing liver dysfunction. We start, you know, I've got somebody who, on astronomical levels of TRT and they got a vitamin D score at level 20, you know what I mean? And it's just like, they don't know where to turn. Like, and guys, it's like, how bad is this? Like, is it good to, you know, should I just do anabolics? That's what the guy at the gym is doing. You know? So I wanted to talk, start with men's hormones. And you told me that you just wrote a book about performance enhancing drugs too. So awesome. Like, let's get this scoop from someone who actually knows what they talk, what they're talking about. So oh, that's a change hormones. 
testosterone. <laughs> let's, let's get into it. What do guys need? Yeah. Okay. So what guys do you need to know is when you're really young, your testosterone levels are low. Well, let's, let's go back all, all the way to when you're a fetus, right? So testosterone and dihydrotestosterone are what makes uh, you male, right? It, it's what makes your testicles develop, your penis develop, all the, the men's parts develop because of the presence of testosterone and something called Mullerian inhibitor factor, which basically makes the women's parts not develop. Okay. And then your testosterone kind of percolates around till you hit 12 or 13 and you hit puberty. And so your testosterone will go from 200 or so up to a thousand. Yeah. And by the time you hit 20, your testosterone's at a thousand. And we all know what happens during puberty. We build muscle, we get rid of fat, our voice gets deeper, our skin gets oily, you know, we get acne, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Your testosterone peaks at the age of 20 and every year after that, it'll go down one or 2%. Okay. So by the time I see a lot of my patients who are in their sixties or seventies or eighties, their testosterone is 200, 300, mm -hmm. 400. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it, it's all over the place, right? But mm -hmm. uh, for to a certain extent, that's where it is. Now, the thing is we live lifestyles that make our testosterone lower, right? So you see all these studies in the news, the average guy's testosterone is 30% lower than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Okay. So the question wow. is, why is that? Okay. Yeah. First of all, hunters had the highest testosterone, right? So if you're out on the plains killing Buffalo with your bare hands, your testosterone has got to be really, really high. Okay. Yeah. Farmers, farmers work hard, right? But they don't, they're not killing Buffalo. So their testosterone levels are lower, but they're still pretty high. Cause you know, farming is, is intense work. Now, if you sit behind a desk typing on a computer all day, or you sit with a laptop on your crotch all day, your testosterone is going to be lower. And the reason it's going to be lower is your body is smart. Like why would your body make a lot of testosterone if you're not killing Buffaloes all day? You know, it, it, your body right. doesn't waste energy. Exactly. And so that's why testosterone levels are lower. And then we don't eat the right foods to a certain extent. We, there's all sorts of trash in our, in our foods, you know, plastics and, and chemicals and so on and so forth that, you know, we don't really understand how it all works, but we know that men's testosterones are lower than they used to be. And the other thing is, right. 40% of men are fat or obese and testosterone, even though testosterone and estrogen, everyone thinks are like vastly different, right? Men are from Mars and women are from Venus, but the, the difference in the molecule of testosterone and the molecule of estrogen is only one single hydrogen ion or atom. So the smallest unit of matter is the difference between testosterone and estrogen. So your body flips testosterone into estrogen in your fat. So the fatter you mm. are, the more estrogen you have, which is why you get man boobs and the less testosterone you have. Mic drop. Yeah. Good. Good thing to so, know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, so here we have a guy, he's overweight. He's, he's listening to this. He's like, that's cool. Cause I have a bunch of body fat and I sit at a desk all day. And what I see the trajectory that the guys go is like, if they're trying to make changes, they they're going to start lifting, right? They're going to start lifting. And what I see happen very often is they either hire some coach who used to be a bodybuilder. That's now giving bodybuilder prescriptions to some married 35 year old guy with two kids, you know, and they, and it's like, Hey, and, uh, you should get on testosterone. And what I'm seeing is like, they're being pushed above a thousand on their TRT. Right. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know if you really need to be that high. So like, if somebody's listening to this, you know what I mean? Like, what do you recommend starting with for someone who finds out, maybe they find out their testosterone is like 250, 300, <laughs> you know, what do you, what do you recommend the path for them? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's a little bit all over the place. Um, but the thing is uh, the bodybuilding community, right? They're competing against other bodybuilders. So there's yeah. natural bodybuilders and there's regular right. bodybuilders. So take football players, right? If you're a football player and your natural testosterone, cause you're 22 years old, it's a thousand and you're competing against other guys that are a thousand, right? But you can get signed by the NFL and make five or $10 million a year. 
if you take performance enhancing drugs, you know, mm-hmm. build a lot of muscle because it works, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. there's no question mm-hmm. it works. Right. 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 So then you have to make a decision. Should I take right. anabolic steroids? And what anabolic means is muscle growing. What catabolic means is muscle wasting. So anabolic steroids. So steroid hormones are just hormones that are derived from cholesterol. So cholesterol is the base molecule. And I don't want to turn this into a biochemistry no, lecture, I, but, I like but people <laughs> have to, yeah, people have to understand like the basics, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I, if you go to Brandeis MD, B-R-A-N-D-E-I-S-M-D, go to media and then go to eBooks. I wrote mm-hmm. three eBooks. One is on just regular old testosterone. One is performance enhancing drugs. And then the other one I'm going to post really soon is the different levels that you can expect from the different testosterone preparations, hmm, which cool. is really interesting because I don't think anyone's ever put that out before. No, that's super helpful. Yeah. Okay. So if you're a football player and you stand to make millions of dollars uh, by boosting muscle, then, you know, that's your decision. I don't judge people right. based on their decisions, totally. but in order for you to get an advantage over the other 22 year olds, whose testosterone is at a thousand, you got to get to 2000 or mm-hmm. 2,500, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you do that, there's something called a negative feedback loop. So what happens is your brain tells your pituitary, which is right here, to make something called LH. And LH goes down to the testicle and tells your testicle to make testosterone. Okay. It also tells, it produces something called FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, which tells your testicles to make sperm. Okay. Now there's a negative feedback loop. And what that means is that it's kind of like a, like a temperature sensor in a, in a, um, in a HVAC, right. In a central heat and air. When you reach a certain level of testosterone, the system clicks off. Okay. But if you're taking a lot of testosterone from the outside, the system will turn off. Okay. And so if it turns off for a week or a month, no big deal. But if it turns off for a long time, right, if you're not educated about this stuff and you're on high levels of anabolic steroids for a long time, guess what? Your testicle shrinks and it doesn't produce sperm anymore. So guess what? You're infertile. So I had a patient. He was an all pro defender guy, defensive guy from the Oakland Raiders played football at a high level for a long time. The guy was massive, 350 pounds. I did his vasectomy. His testicles were that big, Mm -hmm. the size of peas, right? Yeah. So that's the problem is if you don't understand how to use these things, and I see a lot of uh, police, fire, corrections, SWAT guys, and I've seen a lot of people who really mess themselves up because at a young age, they took high levels of testosterone and testosterone derivatives in the bodybuilding community. And some of them have long-term implications, right? Can you discuss what other health impacts you see negative health impacts from taking high levels of anabolic, anabolic steroids for a long time? Absolutely. Okay. So minor stuff is, um, you can get really oily skin. You can get a lot of acne. You can lose hair on your head right? But more uh, significant, it can drive the growth of your prostate, especially if you're an older guy. So we always have to check people's prostates. If they have, it doesn't cause cancer, right? But if you have aggressive prostate cancer, it can push the growth of prostate cancer. So you always have to check your PSA. Okay. Now the other things it can do is it can affect your liver. So you can give yourself liver damage it can affect fertility, right? So you can basically destroy the the chances that you'll ever have a child if you don't do it properly, right? There are are doctors out there that understand how to use this stuff properly and responsibly, Mm -hmm. and we can help you achieve your physical goals and not mess yourself up, okay? It also drives up your hematocrit, which is your red blood cells, right? So uh, now it's unusual to have those kind of issues from a high hematocrit, but there were Belgian cyclists 
that we're using something called EPO, which is a, a medication you take to drive up your red blood cells so that they were better at cycling, right? And they had a really high hematocrit. And then they were in a bike race and they got dehydrated. So their red blood cell count got even higher so that their blood turned into sludge and they had strokes. Wow. Right? Yeah. And that's really bad. Can yeah, you when, talk a little bit more about the liver and what happens with the liver? Yeah. Well, the liver metabolizes testosterone, right? That's the job of the liver is to metabolize uh, molecules and chemicals in your body. And mm -hmm. testosterone has an adverse effect on the liver. And even in some people, it's shown a, a significant increased risk of liver cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's, okay. a, it's a dose dependent thing. The more that you use and the longer that you use it for, you can cause damage to your liver by overloading your liver and then also causing uh, genetic and structural changes in the liver. Wow. Thank you. Okay. And this is one thing like, cause I I'll, I'll be, I'm outspoken a little bit sometimes on long-term chronic anabolic steroid use. Also, I'm very interested in the impact it has on dopamine and, and GABA and serotonin and some of the neurotransmitters, because although I'm not a bodybuilder, I'm, I'm in the gym every day and I, and I'm in that world and I see these personality changes sometimes on gut and guys that are on high levels of anabolic steroids for a long time. Do you have anything to say on that? Yeah, honestly, I don't know much about how it interacts okay. with those neurotransmitters, but the thing is, so you, you asked about like, so a lot of the guys that I'll put on testosterone are in their fifties, sixties, and seventies. Right. And yeah. I will get their levels up to around a thousand to 1200. Okay. I okay. think that's, that's a safe level. Okay. That's a physiologic level, meaning that that's a level that you experience when you're 20 years old. Right hmm. now, what these bodybuild and a lot of guys ask me, well, am I going to go to a bar and beat someone up? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I remember, I remember what it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is that th that's not going to happen. It's the guys that do that are the 20 year old guys yeah. that are getting levels at 2000, 2,500. Yeah. I've had guys come in at levels of 3,300. Wow. Right. Wow. Because they're taking testosterone cypionate. They're taking five or 600 milligrams and they're injecting it. Right. Well, and that's, that's, you know, that's to me, it, that's crazy. And what I see, you know, the impact on sex drive, right. Sex drive and aggression when it goes to super high levels, like what I see, I, I mean, just being blunt, like I see guys that like, they almost feel like they've become sex addicts, right. They're, they're kind of creepy at the gym. I'm not going to lie. Like you can kind of tell, and they're, they're just very, um, forward sexually. It's almost, it's kind of like this, like, can't get enough. I'm, you know, talking to all the chicks and I'm kind of aggressive in my personality. Do you see that in and guys that see, are I don't, I don't see that in levels. my patient population. Cause I won't let my, cause you're, cause you're, yeah, you're not, <laughs> I, I won't, I won't, uh, you know, that I, I, I don't do too much working with the bodybuilding community. It's much more the, the police and the fire. And the thing is, the yeah. problem is there are very few physicians that are willing to do what I'm doing, which is to right. educate and to, cause you know, anabolic steroids really got a bad name because of a lot of a lot of folks that are using them irresponsibly, yeah. but see, like I have a bunch of guys on SWAT teams, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a number of them mess themselves up from taking anabolic steroids at a younger age. And so they're running around with testosterone of three or 400. Right. Okay. They're chasing guys with testosterone of a thousand right. that are amped up on methamphetamines. <laughs> right. And right. honestly, it's a, it's a very dangerous situation Totally. when you're testosterone three or 400 and you got to take down, you know, a guy that's, you know, full on testosterone and amped up on, on stimulants, uh, right. you know, that's, it's, it's, it's life or death situation. You know, it's not like yeah. bodybuilding, like this guy's, you know, bigger than me or right. football, you know, this guy can run faster or hit harder than me. Like, these guys are shooting guns and taking down really bad guys who right. can be stronger than them. And so right. it's really important. But the thing is, I get them to 1,000 or 1,100, 1,200, 1,300. You know, I get them to that level, but I'm not going to push them to 2,000 or 2,500 or 3,000. That's, you know, that's, to me, that's nuts.
Yeah. Well, and you're monitoring their internal health Absolutely. as well. Which we is- monitor their fertility. We monitor the hematocrit. We monitor their estrogen levels, right? So mm-hmm. you got, uh, you know, a guy in the gym knocking back 500 milligrams of, of testosterone cypionate every week. And, uh, you know, his testosterone levels sky high. But, you know, now he's going to start growing man boobs and start buying Bette Midler records because <laughs> his, his estrogen's 150. Yeah. I, can you talk about that? I see that all the time. Um, and it is generally from the guys that, you know, they're just, they don't, whoever got them on testosterone doesn't know what they're doing. And I, we see these super high estrogen you know, levels with it. So I asked one of my patients, this, this was my like epiphany moment. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm asking this guy, and this is my guy that got. 3,300. And he was just doing like, kind of sorry for the term, but kind of meathead bodybuilding, right? He wasn't competing. Yeah, right. He was just like, you know, in the gym, you know, where you just right. want to be big. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I'm like, well, you know, did you get, who'd you get this stuff from? And he's like, well, you know, the doctors won't get it for you. So there's this guy in the gym, big Mike. Yes, exactly. Big, big Mike got it for me. And he, big Mike knows a lot about the stuff. And yes, so everybody knows a big I'm like, mic. <laughs> I'm like, do I want these people to get their stuff from Big Mike? Right. Or do they want to get it from me? Right. Because right. I got all these fancy Ivy League diplomas up on the wall and I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I, I've been researching this, searching this stuff for a long time. And so that was sort of my epiphany moment. And I said, you know, I really want to help these people mm-hmm. so that they don't they don't mess themselves up. Well, and I appreciate your approach of like, Hey bro, I will get your levels high and we'll make sure stuff is optimized. Yeah. You're not yeah. listening to that the records, right? Like, we don't want, I, we don't want the bro science. We want the real science. Yeah. I think that's the reason some guys go to the big mics out there is because they're like, well, a doctor's not going to like, give me enough. Like I got to do whatever big Mike's doing, you know? And it's like, well, when your estrogen's through the roof and your liver is going to crap and eventually you're shutting off all this stuff, like you're not going to thrive, you know? So, it's nice to know that there's doctors out there that are like, Hey, we're open to the stuff. We want to help you optimize and like actually optimize. And that brings me to, um, another point is sometimes when I talk about long-term chronic anabolic steroid use, I'll have guys that are like in their forties and they think I'm talking about just plain old testosterone replacement therapy. And I'm like, Oh no, no, I didn't mean, <laughs> no. If your test is low and like you're, you're lifting weights, you're eating healthy, you're doing everything that you can. And your test is low by all means. Like I'm super support. It's just like a woman who's postmenopausal. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get on hormone replacement therapy after menopause. You better believe it. I'm fully planning on that. You know? So can you talk about the difference there, you know, it's not just performance enhancing. What if we have a 45 year old dad who, yeah, oh, yeah. he's pretty, he lifts weights, but he just has low tests and doesn't know why. Can you talk about the difference there? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so first of all, there's kind of low and there's kind of mildly low, mm-hmm. right? So if you're mildly low and you don't want to go on full on testosterone replacement, because it, it, because it is to a certain extent, all or none, right. and once you get on you know, your right. body's not going to produce more. It's going to continue to produce less. So right. I actually have a supplement called support, uh, which mm-hmm. is available at affirmscience.com. And awesome. what support is, is DHEA. So DHEA is a testosterone precursor. Your body uses DHEA to make testosterone. And in men with low testosterone, DHEA has been shown to improve testosterone levels about 14, 15%. Okay. It also has DIM. DIM is a natural uh, substance. It's in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, and it blocks aromatization, right? Well, what aromatization is, is conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So it naturally blocks aromatization, right? Because the knock on taking DHEA is, well, okay, now it increases testosterone, but it also increases estrogen. But if you can block the aromatization, then you don't get as much estrogen and it's got some Tonkat Ali and some ashwagandha, which are two botanicals that have been shown to improve testosterone. So we'll Ashwana. get, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a Indian, um, herbal yeah. and uh, I use yeah. it for cortisol management, but I didn't know that it also had an impact on. Yeah. Well, I mean, cortisol is basically a steroid hormone, right? Yeah. So it's, there are basically five classes of steroid hormones and one of them is cortisol. Okay. Awesome. And, okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll link that up as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, for a guy that's 
350, it can get you to 425. Guys, 400, it can get you to, you know, 470 or something like that. And that might make a difference. Okay. But then for a guy that really is 250, 300, and also we treat, I treat anyway, patients. I don't just treat numbers. So if someone's got a testosterone of 200, but they're feeling great and they're, you know, sexually active and they're building muscle and they're getting rid of fat. I don't do anything. So, you know, great, have a nice life. Oh, but right. if they're 400 or 450, and that's the other thing is you have to figure out, is it really testosterone? This is the problem with all these mm -hmm. online testosterone shops is you're not going to a doctor. You're going to someone who pushes a button that's going to send you testosterone, right? right? But think about it this way. If you have sleep apnea, right? And you're not hitting REM sleep and you're not getting enough sleep, you're going to be tired. You're going to be low energy, low motivation. You're going to start putting on fat. You're going to lose muscle. You're going to have low libido. Guess what? Someone's going to say, oh, you got low testosterone, but guess what? No, you have sleep apnea. And if someone treats you with testosterone and you have sleep apnea, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Right. Or if you're eating a horrible diet mm -hmm. or if you're under chronic stress, it can have the same situation. So you have to basically rule out or thyroid, yes. right? If you don't right. check a thyroid level and someone's hypothyroid, they're right. going to be sluggish. They're going to put weight on, they're going to lose muscle. You're, you're not going to sleep well. Guess what? You put them on testosterone. You didn't do them a favor. In fact, you, you made it worse. Yeah. So you got to go That's to fun. someone who's going to evaluate all these things and figure out, okay, are you really a candidate? Now, if you are a candidate, it can make an enormous difference. Right? right. Your mood is better. You have more energy, more focus, more drive. You can build muscle. You can take off fat. Your libido is better. Right. right. Like it's and it's not a drug. Right. Some people right. think testosterone is a drug. It's not a drug. It's a natural hormone. Right. So if you have a bat and two balls, you're going to do a lot better on testosterone. And guess what? <laughs> if you're a woman you'll actually do really well on testosterone also, right? Not at the same level, right? So that's, this is what most people don't understand. Men and women both have estrogen and testosterone, right? Just at different levels. But if you give a woman, especially a postmenopausal woman, a little bit of testosterone, it's fantastic. It's good for their heart. It's good for their skin. It's good for their bones. Um, and I get guys that come into my office saying, my wife just went on estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and she's chasing me around the house. You got to help me, doc, you know, mm -hmm. rev up my libido. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, I think it's so nice to know that, like, as a health professional, you know, I was on a live, I'll share this morning, I was on a live on Instagram and this woman said, like, what should I take for bloating? Okay. And it really reminds me of what you just said there. And I'm like, there's no way I can answer that in good consciousness <laughs> yeah, exactly. as a health professional over a live. Like I have Stop no eating idea. potato chips. Yeah. I have no idea what, I mean, there could be mental, emotional stuff. There could be food sensitivities. There could be a, you know, a lack of certain gut strains of gut bacteria that you need. Like, I don't know. And if you're getting real help and anybody listening, if you're, you know, struggling with mood, libido, energy, all that, just like you just said, it's like, there could be a million reasons for that. And you need somebody who understands a wide variety of implications in the body exactly. to help you get to where you want to go. And, and there is kind of this knee jerk reaction, especially testosterone. It's kind of, it's like popularized. Like we understand you hear about testosterone, right? Progesterone, not really popularized, right? People aren't like, Oh, I need to get on progesterone where they might actually really need, you know what I mean? But like we jump to conclusions with testosterone. Cause like men have kind of labeled it as like, that makes me a man. And if I'm not feeling like a man enough, I just need more of that. And I, I, get, I get it. It does definitely help. And it is a life-changing intervention for guys that are low. Like it's awesome. I mean, for guys that really need it, oh, it's yeah. life changing for them, life changing, you yeah. know, but jumping to conclusions without a professional. But you know, the them. interesting thing is, and this is the reason I wrote the, um, the testosterone levels ebook is that when I was doing sort of I was, I had a regular urology practice for, I'm a board certified urologist. I was voted the top urologist in the San Francisco Bay area for the past nine years. Um, mm -hmm. But when I had a regular urology practice, I would be like, let's get your testosterone into the quote, normal range. 
Mm-hmm. So let's get it into the five or six hundreds. And that's and- what all of the commercial preparations will do. So uh, creams like androgel or gels or testa, testa, I mean, not uh, androgel, test, uh, androderm, sorry, there's so many of them out there. <laughs> it's hard to keep them all. Androderm, yeah. right? Or Zyosted, which is an injection, or Natesto, which is up the nose, or um, there's one you put on your underarm. That's the, uh, uh, gosh, there's so many of them. Right? I didn't know there but, were all those options. I, I yeah, didn't know yeah, you can do. Um, and there's a nasal. new one. There's a new one, Jitenzo, which you know. Okay, this is this company got FDA approval for Jitenzo, which is an oral testosterone preparation, but it doesn't use the the blood system. It uses lymphatic system to. Yeah. Because it, like you said, you can't go through the blood because it gets metabolized by the liver, but it goes into the lymphatics from the lymphatics. It goes into the blood. And so you lose the first pass metabolism. Okay. And they're going to be advertising like crazy. Right. But if you look at the, and the, and it's really, really um, deceiving advertising, Mm. right. Because they're going to say 87% of patients got into the quote, eugonadal range meaning that you, you go natal means normal testosterone range. Right. And, but then if you look, you got to take it twice a day, you'll get a peak at 600 and then it'll drop and then oh. peak at 600 and then it'll drop. So two thirds of the day, you're actually under 400. Wow. But I can guarantee you that they're going to be advertising and they're going to be guys with testosterones of 350 mm. that will go on this preparation, thinking it's going to be a great thing for them. Mm-hmm. but it's not okay. Wow. In my experience, and I have a lot of experience now <clears throat> and a lot more experience than, than most urologists that you have to get your levels up to 900, a 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 in order for you to really get the benefits mm. of testosterone. Mm. I'll get, you know, if someone has prostate cancer has been treated for prostate cancer, can't get super high levels, I'll get them to the five or 600 level and they'll feel better. But Mm -hmm. if you're a regular guy who's in their forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, and you want to feel better, you want to feel like Mm -hmm. your old self, you got to get it up to the thousand range. And the only Uh things that will get you to that level are injection therapy, you know, either shots Mm -hmm. or pellets. Okay. Okay. Uh, The rest of the stuff, it just doesn't do it. Wow. And then in terms of the injections and the pellets, like what are you doing to manage estrogens with those guys that are getting? Yeah. So this is also, you know, something that you really need. You need to be, I'm sorry, but you need to be at a a doctor, a healthcare provider, right? Because it's, it's your, your body is really complex and you're playing with body chemistry and I'm sorry, big Mike, but (laughs) you don't really understand. (laughs) And even if you do understand the body chemistry, you don't have access. You can't write for lab studies. You can't write for certain medications. So testosterone converts to estrogen, right? Estrogen is actually good for guys, right? It actually builds bone much, much more effectively than estrogen, right? And it it kind of mellows our personality. So if you're going to have a testosterone of 1200, it's actually not a bad idea to have estrogen that's in the 50s, 60s, 70s. But, you know, when you get much higher than that, you want to bring it down. So there's something called anastrozole and anastrozole is a pharma pharmacologic block of testosterone into estrogen. But I've seen guys that come in on high levels of testosterone and also relatively high levels of anastrozole and their estrogens are zero. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's not good. Right. Because that will affect your bones. Right. So you know, you'll be 45, 50 years old, you'll have big muscles and you'll fall and you'll break your hip. Right. Right. Cause right. your bones are thin because you don't have estrogen. Right. If so you're it's feeling all like a man, so you're going to do a bunch of yeah, daredevil stuff. Exactly. And, you know, no like, oh. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you hear your, 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 how often do you check labs on guys that are on testosterone? Um, so or in the beginning, it? in the beginning, we check it fairly frequently. Uh-huh. Right. I do a lot of testosterone pellets. I find that guys get great results on testosterone pellets. 
Um, and, but in the beginning, we check it fairly frequently, you know, monthly or every three months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you should certainly check it at least once a year. And you, you need to check a PSA. You need to check testosterone levels. You need to check estrogen. You need to check liver function tests, hematocrit, you know, a bunch of stuff um, at least once a year. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. and then more based on, you know, who the, who the patient is. Right. Well, what's um, going on with them. Right. Exactly. And so yeah. it just, it, it has to be done in a, in a really well-managed controlled situation. Otherwise you can yep. really mess someone up. Yep. 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 I appreciate, I appreciate that um, commitment to excellence because it's not everywhere. I would say, you know, I'm sure you can vouch for this. Like I have seen male clients who have gone to hormone doctors that like, I'm like, I, like I told you before the show, like one of my recent clients, like they were asking him how much he wanted instead yeah. of making recommendations. And I was like, yeah. okay, well go somewhere else. <laughs> you yeah. know, I started like messaging, you know, it's, calling. you know, and unfortunately it's, it's, it makes money for some people and it's a push right. the button kind of thing. And it's an access kind of thing. The other thing is one of the reasons I like pellets. Well, there are a couple of reasons I like pellets. One is that it's a natural testosterone, right? So it's actually the real testosterone molecule. Whereas the injection testosterone is either testosterone cypionate or testosterone ethanate. So it's a synthetic lab derived version of testosterone. But the other thing is that you're, you're playing with your body's cycles, right? So your body really has three cycles. One is a 24 hour cycle, a sleep wake cycle. So your testosterone naturally will peak in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. And by the late afternoon, it will decline. And then when you sleep, your testosterone builds back up, right? Which is another, I mean, there's like a million reasons now that we understand why sleep is important. Mm -hmm. Re recharging testosterone is important. Obviously mm -hmm. muscle building is critically important. Right. The second phase of sleep is your muscle building part, psychological rehabil rehabilitation or revitalization. That's a third phase of sleep. You know, there's so many reasons to so get many. good sleep, right? Totally. Uh, I don't want to go on and on about the that. Prevention. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm a sleep yeah, nut. Yeah. <laughs> sleep um, nut. But yeah. that circadian rhythm is a 24 hour rhythm. Sun goes up, sun goes down. Okay. Then we have yearly rhythms, right? The based on temperature and sun position, so on and so forth. And then women have 28 day rhythms, right? right? With injection of testosterone, there's a seven day rhythm or a three and a half day rhythm or whatever mm -hmm. rhythm you want to do when you inject testosterone. Right. But there's no okay. physiologic equivalent, right? Wow. There's nothing that happens in our body that happens every seven days or every three and a half mm -hmm. days. And so, so you're changing point. your body's rhythms Huge. in a way that we don't really understand wow. what the long-term implications of that. Right. Are, right. It just, to me, as a, you know, as a clinical researcher and as a doctor, as a scientist, it just doesn't make sort of sense that to is... me. Whereas with okay. pellets, you get the levels up and they stay steady for mm. four to six months, right? And there are a lot of stuff in your body that stays steady for, you know, all the time. And so right. to me, that just physiologically makes yeah. a lot more sense. Yeah, that's a really great distinction. Thank you for sharing that. It's definitely something to think about. And for guys and in, in terms of what type they're using, I want to hold up your book. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you'll see this. If not, I'll tell you um, this book, the 21st century man, like, look at this thing. <laughs> I was like reading through this with my kids, actually. <laughs> it was, it was, it's, there's so there's like everything, there's everything in here. And it has all of your colleagues in here. It has so many um, health experts, um, opinion. So I just wanted to, to share that if you want to know anything about men's health, but there's also stuff pertaining to women in here too, please check that out. And I wanted to kind of segue that into talking about, we talked about, um, possibly talking about men building muscle over age 50, you know, yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll vouch for women too. I'm going to let you talk about men, but women, this is definitely possible for us too, but there is a hormonal, uh, base kind of yeah. needed to make that yeah. a lot easier. So, <laughs> so first of that? all, thank you for, for plugging my book. I really appreciate it. It's like, it's the culmination of 25 years of, uh, you know, I went to Brown university and Harvard for research and Vanderbilt for medical school and UCLA for surgery and for urology and 
Um, and, and I felt like an obligation, you know, yeah. when you get a, when you get a really good education, you know, you can either use it to just make a lot of money or you can give back. And this was sort of my way of giving back to, to men, men, especially over the age of 40 and their families and their communities and their spouses. And then I roped in 50 or 60 of my a physician and men's health colleagues. And these are top people in the country. I mean, really yeah. uh, outstanding. So, and, and then, you know, my patients really inform me of what to write about, right? So it started out like a 200 page book, a 250 page book. And then someone would come in and ask me a question and I'd say, wow, that's a really good chapter. And then <laughs> it's it just the the chapters just kept adding up. And by the end of the book, I had 101 chapters, over 900 pages. And, uh, but it's written for men in that I can't stand if I read a 300 page book and it's only four pages of information. I'm like, you know, you could have just written four pages. Yeah. <laughs> right. Way. But this is 900 plus pages. And the least number of words was 900 pages of words, right? This, the information density, oh, each chapter is like five or 10 pages, but that five or 10 pages could literally be 50 or 60 pages. It's yeah, like, we're it, all just distilling down the essentials. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it, I was like, it is written for men. Cause it's straight to the point. It's just like, yeah. here it is bullet point, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's not yeah. like, and on a Tuesday, let me tell you a story about last Tuesday <laughs> when I was in my office, you know, <laughs> he walked yeah. in with a black shirt and gray shorts. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That stuff drives me crazy. No. So I'm like, get to that boy. No, this, to <laughs> this book is like, all right, here's a joke. Here's a story. This is what you do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I mean, there's, gosh, I, there, I mean, I will just kind of list some of the stuff. It's just, and, and I, as I'm pulling this up, I will say this podcast is that same feeling for me. Like I, I lose money on this podcast. This is not a money maker for me. This is a pure give back. I don't even really try to make money off of it because I'm like, I have so many amazing connections in the health industry. It feels selfish to just keep it all to myself, you yeah. know? And if I share it with others then I get to learn a little deeper too. And now I yeah. have like you coming on and it's just amazing, but you know, I mean, there's anything from, um, I mean, there's so many specialists, but there's mental health and relationship skills and food and exercise and addictions, sexual mm-hmm. healing, sexual medicine, you know, you've got a whole section on healthcare it's, and it is, it's very practical. It's like a, um, it's, it's like a guide, you know, it's like, if yeah. you want the real info, it's right in there. So it's awesome. But let's circle back to muscle building. Yeah. Muscle building. Okay. Over 50. So if you want to build muscle and you're 20 years old, go to McDonald's and go to the gym. Right. It's, right. you know, it's, it's easy to build muscle when you're 20. Right. Okay. <laughs> but there was really, I'm kind of being facetious, you know, but if you want to no, be a bodybuilder, you got to do better than that. But, but I remember like, remember Eric Hyden, the, the speed skater, there was a, he won. Yeah. I'm older than you. Right. He won five Olympic gold medals in one, in one Olympics. Right. And, and they asked him like, well, what do you eat? And he said, Oh, I'll go to McDonald's. <laughs> right. Like if at that age, you, it's so much easier to build muscle. There was just totally. a really interesting article from the feed, the fielding lab at Tufts. And they compared the genetic expression of muscle in 20 year olds versus 50 year olds doing exactly the same exercise. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. what they found is there was three times the gene expression in 20 year olds versus 50 year olds. Meaning that as a, a 55 year old, I have to work three times harder than mm-hmm. my 16 year old son to mm-hmm. build the same amount of muscle. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way it is. That's why you go to an expert like yourself when you're my age, to teach you how to build muscle better because it's, you got to work three times harder and you got to work smarter, right? The other thing is your tendons and ligaments are desiccated. They're dried up, right? So every day you got to stretch. I tell all of my patients every morning when you wake up 15 minutes of stretching flexibility, right? I have a little exercise video that I made, which is kind of like silly, but it's just the stuff that I do. It's, you know, someone like yourself has much, much more knowledge or, um, Dean Pullman. I, he wrote, uh, he's the yoga for men guy. 
He wrote a chapter on yoga for the book. He wrote a chapter on, on mindfulness meditation for the book, right? He's got great videos, just 10, 15 minutes of getting your bones and joints moving, right? Because you're much, much more likely to get injured mm -hmm. when you're 55, 60, 65 years old than you are when you're younger. And yeah, there's a physiologic I mean, reason for that. It's not like, it's not just you. It's the way our biology changes. And that's yes. the thing to understand about the aging process. Is it's, it's a change in the biology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, for, so I recently had this experience. I don't think he listens to my podcast. I think I'll be good, but I was, I was buying a couch from a guy down the road, right? A really nice little section. He's coming a really nice guy. And he just kept making all these comments. He's so nice helping me move it in. And he just kept making all these comments about how old he was and wait till you get over 50. And, you know, I used to be able to do, I mean, it was just, they were just rolling out, you know? <laughs> And, um, he actually goes to my gym too. And I ran into him and he was like, Hey, I've got some, you know, some pain in my, uh, my knee, you know, what should I do? Wait till you get old like me. I think I'm just old. And I was just like, no, listen, and I was like, it, it, this isn't a death sentence getting old. It's just, yes. Does our, do, does our natural collagen production go down? Do the things that make muscle building easier go down as we age? Yes. That is a natural part of aging. Can we help and support our body anyway? Absolutely. So doing yeah. things that's or collagen production, like I'll look it up. You can literally just Google it, the certain vitamins and minerals that you need to be able to have healthy production of bone, uh, collagen, tendons, ligaments. And another thing I'll just push for real quick is like, if you're over 50 and you've got like massive ligament or tendon stuff, look into PRP, right? Look in it because you're not going to get blood flow into your, the very top of your tendon, right? But you can inject something that helps you create stem cells and you can, we can be proactive about these things. Eat enough amino acids that it's easier to build muscle. You're not eating any proteins, you know, well, you're out yeah, there, absolutely. You know, you are. bring up so, so many good, you bring, honestly, you bring up so many good points. So first of all, PRP is amazing. Yeah. Charles Runnels, the guy that invented the P shot, the O shot and the vampire facelift mm. wrote the PRP chapter in the book. It's an oh, amazing, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's an wow. amazing chapter. That's what I'm telling you. There's like an all-star cool. cast. You know, yeah. Gary Donovitz, the, the, the founder and chairman of BioT, the biggest testosterone company in the United States, wrote the chapter on testosterone. Awesome. Um, you know, it's just like there's an amazing chapter Drinking. on stem cells. The best chapter I think yeah. I've ever read wow. on stem cells that explains it in a way that lay people can actually understand yeah. stem cells. Because, you know, there's people ripping people off all around the country. Yes. giving them quote stem cells. So you got to understand what you're purchasing. You got to understand what right. it's all about. Um, but you, you, gosh, you bring up so many great points about um, bones and joints and collagen. You know, there's something called sarcopenia of aging, right? Sarcopenia just means you lose muscle. And the, one of the first slides I put up for all of my patients is the world record for the hundred yard freestyle and swim, right? And it's just, from 20 to 60, the, the world record is pretty flat, right? I mean, the 60-year-old obviously is swimming slower than the best 20-year-old, but 60-year-olds are pretty darn fast. But after 60, there's an inflection point, and the slope of the, the inflection point changes, right? And these are guys that are swimming three, four hours a day. They're eating right. They're, they have masseuses, and they're taking the right mm -hmm. supplements, and they're getting sleep. Even if you're doing everything right, Right. At the age of 60, biologically, you're going to slow down. And then there's another inflection point at the age of 80, where really you accelerate because at the end of the day, no one gets out alive. Yeah, exactly. Oh. One thing guaranteed, guaranteed. Yeah, one we're guaranteed. all going to die. You know, I had, a, I had a patient, Mr. Pappas, he was the coolest guy at the age of 80. He did 1100 pushups in one hour. He broke Jack LaLanne's record. Wow. Yeah. But at the age of 85, uh, he wasn't the same Mr. Pappas that he was at the age of 80, mm -hmm. right? So you just, you have to understand these things. So I always talk about to my patients about flexibility. I talk to them about don't get injured, right? Yeah. A lot of yeah. people, they're like, you know, when you're younger, you're like, I just push through it, you know, push through the pain, <laughs> you know, let's just go for it. Right. And, and things work out pretty well for you with that approach when you're in your twenties, but when you're in your fifties, for me, as soon as I start to feel pain, I stop. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And, 
And not only are you going to make things 10 times worse and now you're out for three months and it's just getting worse and worse in terms of muscle building, I will say like, if something feels off, something feels wrong, let's say you're just doing a row or a lap pull down or, you know, lateral raises or anything like that. And something feels like owie pain. That means that somewhere in that whole mess, some muscles are turned off. Your body is protecting you from totally breaking that joint or that area. And so your muscles are turned off. So if you're injured, you're still just trying to push through it and be a man or whatever. I see this all the time with men, especially older men with the bench press, right? It's like some symbol of manhood for them or something. And they have like the tightest pec minor, the tightest, you know, all the front there's it's going in their front delts all the time. And they're, um, they're just a hair away from ripping their biceps tendon or their pec. And they just keep going through it and they keep rubbing it. And they're like, ow. And then they just keep doing it. And I'm like looking at them, like you are literally being so stupid right now. Like I really, like you're just minimizing any results that you can get because clearly something's yeah. not work. So it's like, go in to a chiropractor and massage therapist and get that work done. You yeah. can work glutes for a little while or whatever. Exactly. Well for you, this you know? is, this and is what I call it. the Peloton effect. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's really interesting, right? All these people that bought these Peloton bikes during uh, COVID, right? They improved their cardiovascular fitness. That was one good thing, but yes. they didn't build muscle, nope. right? And the reason they didn't build muscle is most people don't understand how you build muscle, right? Yeah. Stressing a muscle does not build muscle, yeah. right? Stressing a muscle tears down muscle. It puts micro exactly. tears into the muscle. The way you build muscle is you rest exactly. and you eat protein exactly. and you take <clears throat> a nitric oxide booster. And you take creatine and you and wait sleep. and you sleep definitely. And, and you wait long enough for that muscle to heal. So for example, if you're 20, that may be 24 hours, 36 hours. If yeah. you're 55, that's going to be 72 hours. So I put my patients, you know, and I, I don't, I'm, I'm not an expert at this like you are, but I was a triathlete when I was younger and I ran track and cross country in college. So I know enough about this stuff. Right. And so I, I put them on ABC, ambulate, bike, circuit train. Love repeat, it. Right? Yeah. So the first day you do something on your feet, whether it's walking, running, treadmill, stairmaster. Uh, and you can, you can, if you're a rower, you can substitute that or a swimmer, you can substitute that, but something to build cardiovascular fitness. Yeah. The next day you cycle, right? Get on an exercise bike, right? And then the next day you do circuit training, right? You get five or six or seven or eight exercises and you do it in rapid succession. So you get some cardio, but you also get muscle building. And when you're my age, it's high reps, low weight, right? Because the low reps, high weight is going to injure something. And when you injure something, your blood flow is less at my age and you're not going to heal it as quickly. So you have to be really smart. You have to understand it's a 72 hour cycle for that muscle that you stressed to recover. And if you stress it again in that window, one, you're not mm -hmm. going to build the muscle. And second of all, you're much more likely to damage the muscle. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You're talking about the 72 hour window because sometimes I'll get men there, you know, over 50 or pushing 50 and they're in this it's, we call it chronic cardio. It's a Mark Sisson phrase that we use in our end of the industry a lot. And it's just, it's all, I just want to run triathlons and I just want to go, 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 go. I want to do all this endurance stuff. And I see testosterone levels low in these men often. And, you know, maybe Absolutely. it wasn't for all that, but it's like, you've got like my, I'm always, I'm kind of mean when I, cause I'm like, I need you to listen. I need you to rest. I, you can only do one run day, one bike day and one swim day. That's it. And the rest of you, you can't, all you can do the other days is lift. I want you to build muscle and rest. And I want short, shorter workout duration, get the stimulus and get out and rest hard and get lots of sleep because you're exactly right. All the magic happens in the recovery. And if you want to build muscle, you know, I don't, I don't count calories. I don't watch what I eat. I don't, you know, I, I intermittent fast because that flows well and helps me sleep better and recover better, but I eat whatever I want during the day, just high quality food. I make sure I focus on protein, real food. And it's an easy flow. And I get a lot of freaking leeway because I have a lot of muscle for a woman, you know, it makes things that the hormonal shifts that happen 
And I really do think that I experienced an increase in testosterone when I started lifting, even though it's just purely from lifting, I don't take anything to support that, but I, I noticed that I just started feeling incredible energy levels. Uh, I became an entrepreneur. I started a business. Like I you know, started thinking more critically. So yeah. And, and as a baseline co- kind of going full circle in this conversation, if your test is low and you're in that age group, I mean, good luck. It's not going to have, especially these high performance men. I'm sure you work with a lot of the same kind of people. They're these high performers. They have Uber, you know, they got like multiple six, seven figure businesses. They got their hand in all these you know, they're traveling all the time. They got families. They're just life stress is too, through the freaking roof, even though they don't feel stressed because they're so used to it. It's a lot on the body. It is a lot of pressure on the body and the mind all day long. And on top of it, you're just adding all this like cardio long endurance stuff. It's just like stress mania. So for those, oh, guys, yeah. it's like, well, you know, the, the chronic stress up. people. Oh. Yeah. It's really interesting. The chronic stress guys, they get GI problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They get sexual problems. They have high blood pressure. Yeah. Right. And, and I I see a lot of them and, and I try to explain to them, right. Chronic stress is bad for all of those things. You have to think about it in terms of mother nature of evolution, right? Stress is being chased by a bear, right? What happens when you're chased by a bear, your blood flow goes to your muscles, to your brain, to your eyes, to your heart, right? That's where you're shunting blood. And there's two real classes of stress hormones. There's the adrenaline, that's the acute stress hormone. And there's the cortisol, which is the chronic stress hormone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now what are not essential when you're being chased by a bear? Okay. One is digestion. Yeah. Second is kidney function, making urine. Uh, Third is erections. Right. Right. I mean, why would you procreate when you're being chased by a bear? Right. And then there are other things like I had a guy in yesterday who said he's losing his hair. He's, you know, he's has a lot of work stress. He was a whistleblower and he's, you know, the, Mm. the, the people in his company are coming down on him and he has to sue people. I mean, it's really a big mess. And he's like, I'm losing my hair. Well, you know, why would your body waste blood flow on keeping your hair if you're running away from a bear? Totally. Right. So, you know, like you feel like, yeah, of course. So you feel like your whole life is falling apart because of this chronic stress, right? It's all about, you know, health really comes down to blood flow. Can you get good blood flow Mm -hmm. to the important parts of your body? And so a lot of these guys that are sort of chronically stressed, they get erectile dysfunction right? For a lot of different reasons, they're not sleeping well, they're not getting blood flow to the right places. And so, you know, you may reach the top of the mountain. It's like, I love a tour de France is going on now, which is one of my favorite events. I love working out, you know, riding my, my bike, Yeah. you know, with the tour de France guys. Right. But the end of the tour de France, the guys stands up on the podium to get the medal. Right. And there's like beautiful women on either side of him. And he's impotent, <laughs> right? Cause he's been sitting on a bike seat for six hours. <laughs> you know, all these guys that like spend all this time stressing themselves out, building businesses, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're standing at the, the pinnacle, but that, you know, their GI system is messed up. They're fat yeah. they're They can't build muscle. They're impotent and their family left them because, uh, you know, they spent too much time at work. So, you know, what are you really actually achieving by living that life of chronic stress? Yeah, it's wounded behavior. So at some point their value got wrapped up in financial success, you know, and it'll get you. And I, I have seen it over and over and, um, uh, I'll wrap this whole thing up with, you know, um, I think there's a general lack of respect for rest in our society. It is not valued. And, um, a couple of years ago, I made that decision for myself that I demand rest. I demand time with my kids. I demand time in nature by myself. I demand not being in chronic stress mode and every, it has become easy to maintain my physique, my happiness levels, my gut health, you know, everything's become easy because the magic happens in the downtime, you know, and the last thing I'll say to you is with women and men, like if your hormones are whacked, 
you are not going to win a mental battle against your, the chemicals in your body, your hormones and your neurotransmitters. And there's so much shaming around this. Like, I don't know why I can't get my act together. I just don't have any motivation. I'm lazy, but get your hormones checked, get them checked. Cause I've seen in women and men life changing results for that. They're like, Oh no wonder I felt like that. Like I had no estrogen or like no testosterone practically, you know? So yeah, please check. And yeah. And just, can I, um, yeah. there's, there's a, a really, really important chapter in the book. And also it's so important that I actually put it on our website, which is the 21st century man.com all written out in letters, the 21st century man, okay. which is how to make the most of your appointment with your doctor. Oh, right. Awesome. So, you know, doctors are, are, are really smart people. We're sort of gatekeepers for healthcare resources, uh -huh. but doctors are stressed, burnt out even before COVID, but after COVID, it's just a, it's a nightmare. Right. Okay. Right. And there was a huge study that looked at a hundred million patient charts and found that the average doctor's vid is, visit is 16 minutes and 14 seconds. Wow. Okay. So th this video and this chapter explains to you how to make the most of your doctor visit. And just in a nutshell, first of all, have your medical history available, just print it out, right? Yeah. What medical problems you have? Uh, what surgeries have you had? Uh, do you drink? Do you smoke? What's your family history? Okay. Have a list of your medications and the medications you've tried and you didn't like, or it didn't work for you. Have a list of every imaging study you've ever had, right? If you're coming in for a back problem, have all your MRIs, your x-rays, your CAT scans, all that kind of stuff printed out, right? And then, because you have to see yourself as the partner with your physician mm -hmm. in your healthcare, right? You can't yeah. expect your doctor to kind of look at you and magically know what's going on, right? right? right. And then- Right. Write up a history of present illness. Why are you here? In so, as much detail as you possibly can muster up, right? Anything right. that you think that's relevant, because your doctor is going to go through there and say, this is relevant. That's not relevant. This is right. relevant. And sometimes things are relevant that you don't really understand. Right. And then make a list of questions, mm. you know, write them down. Because the thing is, if you don't, you're going to leave the doctor's office and you're going to say, gosh, I wish I had ask that question, you know, I totally forgot, or there wasn't enough time for me to ask that question. But if you write it down and hand it to the doctor, the doctor's right. going to look at it and they're likely going to ask, answer that question, right? You that. have to think of yourself as your physician's partner, Love it. right? You can't expect the doctor to know everything and do everything. And at 16 minutes and 14 seconds, it's time for the next person because, you know, the economics of healthcare are such that you yeah. got to see a patient every 15 minutes in order to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. That is such excellent advice. Even me as a health coach, you know, sometimes I'm like, it, it's, a, it's putting clues together. It's the same with the doctors. Yeah, like, of course. Oh, okay. They have this huge trauma. Well, that's good to know about, or, you know, they, you know, run marathons. Well, that was an important piece of information that I didn't have. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm probing and probing and a client will be like, well, I just did two rounds of antibiotics. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, yeah. I'm glad I asked. Holy cow. Why? Well, and you know, if you're on a, <laughs> if you're on a quinolone antibiotic for a urinary tract infection and you go in for a big workout, you're going to tear your Achilles tendon. Yes. Yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Good night. So that is, that is I mean, such you great know, advice. it's just, you, it, you know, you people like yourself and myself, we know a lot of stuff, right? You know, it, a lot more than you can pull off of Google in a half an hour right. and you got to provide us with the data. Right. Uh, and if you provide us with the data, you know, we can put it together for you in a way that really makes sense. Uh, and, you know, I mean, God bless you for doing the podcast and producing the resources that you do. And I, you know, I do the same stuff. I got yeah. the book and, and ebooks right. and, and yeah. podcasts and YouTube channels. I mean, you know, people like us, we want to provide the people that, that, that follow us and, and, and visit us with really good information so that you can optimize your, your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, your sexual health. I mean, that's what the 21st century man is all about is, is yeah. optimizing every aspect of your health. So you can live really a full, uh, happy life.
Yeah. Cause they're all intertwined. They're all, they all play off yeah, each other. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, Dr. Brandy, thank you so much. For doing oh, what my, doing. my pleasure. I know it's a labor Tara. of love and I appreciate you coming and sharing all your expertise with us today for creating this book. And I, it, you know, it takes a village. I, everybody has a different perspective. And I love that you did that with this book. You didn't just, I know everything and I'm going to write about everything. You're like, well, let me just get the best experts I know. And let's just collab. So people get the best of the best in all these different areas. So it's awesome. We will link that up. We'll link out the, your website and the other things that we mentioned today. But again, Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. For well, thanks for having me on and thank you for everything that you do.